Hey, what's going on guys? So today I will be explaining everything you need to know about simulacrums. So the main reason why I am making this video is because a lot of people are asking me for a certain builds, how to do simulacrums, like which builds are good for them. And very often, even if I recommend some kind of builds, then people come back to me and say they are struggling with them. So I do believe one of the main reasons people are struggling with them is because of the mechanics that are simulacrums in simulacrums, and there is a lot of them, and people just don't know how to, ha how to handle them, especially the bosses. But first of all, let's talk about the basics. So how to get simulacrum? It's coming from the Delirium League. So when you encounter the mirror of delirium you will be dropping simulacrum splinters and once you get 300 of them you will be able to convert it into a simulacrum so let's go inside one of them so i can show you how it looks like so simulacrum is a 20 waves encounter and each with each wave it gets harder and harder and you get more and more rewards and the amount of rewards you get depends also on the amount of monsters you kill in this wave. So for example here, you can see this is wave 1 and it only has one reward which is Harbinger. But after I start it, the monsters will uh, start spawning and once I kill them, you can see the bar filling up and I will get one Harbinger reward, now I will get two and so on. So each wave lasts around 30 seconds and depending on how many monsters you are able to kill in that time you will get more rewards. And if you are not killing monsters, the mo more monsters can't spawn. So it is really important to kill monsters pretty fast so that uh, new monsters can spawn. So this way you can get more rewards. So that's also one of the issues people are asking me, like how can you get 5-6 rewards and well the most important part is to just kill monsters fast. If you are not killing them fast enough, more of them can spawn and you will get less rewards. And the second reason why you are not getting enough rewards is simply because of RNG. Uh, some waves just generate less monsters, so you sometimes are just not able to get enough rewards. And maximum you can get is 6. I never got 7 rewards. I do believe it is impossible, but 5 is the average. Usually you will not be able to get 6, and it's also it depends on the layout, just some layouts are worse than the others. So Simulacrum has, I believe, 5 different layouts, and each layout uh, is based on one of the towns. So as you can see here, this one is the Act 6 or Act 1 town, and let me show you the other layout so I can show you the like which ones are the best. So this one is actually in my opinion the best one. So just to go back to it I will just go to the Act Town. Mm. So this one here uh, has basically a two main areas. So one area here and one area at the bottom and you can stand in this stand in this door and just attack to the top and bottom and you will be able to cover most of the monsters some of the monsters will spawn here but not that many of them so you will be able to kill most of them all of the time so this layout is actually in my opinion the best one a lot of people will say that bridge and company is the best one but in my opinion it's not it is still a really good one, don't get me wrong, I still uh, think it's one of the best ones, but uh, Act uh, 6 I think is better. And the reason why this one is really good is because it's just open, you can just stand here and attack to the top and attack to the bottom and you will be able to kill most of the monsters. But I do believe it is worse because it's just too open and monsters will be more spread out, so you will not be able to kill all of them with just one attack and also some of the monsters spawn here or like around here and you are not able to reach them with most of the abilities if you stand, if you stand like 
let's say around here so you will have to just move around a bit so this is number two in my opinion it is uh, still amazing don't get me wrong most of the time you will be uh, able to get six rewards when you are doing this layout the layout number three is act three so encampment in this layout you would stand around here and monsters will spawn at the top on the stairs sometimes mostly in this area and some of them will also spawn here so you should stand around this area and this way you'll be able to hit top left right side and the bottom it's still pretty nice layout it's not as good as the other two uh, mostly because of like this corner i would say if you are standing here you can hit most of the monsters but you are not able to reach the downside over there obviously it also depends on the build that are you, are, you are playing but yeah it's still pretty good it's just not the best and also some of the monsters spawn on the stairs so it's just not the best but it's still not as annoying as the last two so next one is the high gate so this one is second to the worst and this area is actually blocked off so it's only this area the bottom part and the top up to here so this part would also be blocked off so because of that uh, you most of the time will just stand here and hit towards the waypoint towards the bottom and towards the top but even if you do that you will not be able to reach the monsters at the top so you will have to just run around from time to time and you will not be able to clear all of all of the monsters so this layout is not the best and it's i would say decently hard to get six rewards you will very often get five rewards and almost get six so it's just not the best but i would recommend standing around this spot and from time to time run to the top part and the last layout which is the worst one is act 10 dogs so this layout is actually opened to the bottom mm, you can show it over here but you will just go in the line to the bottom and all the way over here so there will be no monsters on the boat so usually you will just stand around here and you will hit to the bottom and to the right side but even if you do that you will not be able to reach all of the monsters to the bottom with most of the skills and also all of the monsters to the right so because of that you will barely ever get six rewards when you are doing this layout and also it is really hard to avoid bosses mechanics because there is no open spaces it's just the like two lines i guess this one is a bit bigger but it's still not that great so that's all when it comes to layouts now uh, let's talk about the monsters and bosses so when you start wave 10 and above you can start spawning the boss the omniphobia and 15 and above you can start spawning the cosis boss and you always have to encounter at least uh, once each one of them and sometimes both of them can spawn in the same way so you have to fight both of the bosses at the same time and you can encounter them uh, more than once it's just a chance usually you will encounter one on Mephobia, one cosis sometimes two sometimes three uh, I don't believe it's that common to get more than three. Mm. In terms of just the normal monsters, they have a ton of abilities, so I'm not going to explain every single one of them. But the most important thing you need to know is that they will uh, do a lot of AoE. So as you can see here, uh, most of the attacks of the monsters will be some kind of area. And also they will have on death mechanics which are also an area of effect because of that uh, things like corpse explosion stuff and just moving around are really good to counter these mechanics also some of the monsters spawn uh, curses on the ground and you can 
see them as like a circle and if you stand in that circle you will be cursed so I just main recommendation do not stand still just run around hit few times run around and so on mm, the most important part about the monsters is just is that they can affect one of the three new uh, three different I would I should say ailments elemental ailments so you can see here there is normally the monsters apply ignite chill freeze and shock uh, and the, these monsters also normally apply them but they also have some special abilities or on the waves there there can be a mod that says that the monsters apply uh, scorch brittle and sap which are also elemental ailments so fire cold and lightning but are just doing different things and they are very dangerous so the most important defense mechanics you should have uh, when you're doing simulacrums is uh, immunity to ailments so you should not focus on getting immunity to freeze immunity to ignite immunity to shock just all ailments because all elemental ailments because that will also make you immune to scorch brittle and sap so if you get for example 100 percent chance to avoid ailments like crystal skin and the other mods you will also be immune to these three elements but if you are immune to freeze and so on you will not be immune to them so that's the most important thing to focus on next uh, important thing when it comes to difficulty is the mods so as you can see here wave 3 only has uh, more monster life but with more and more uh, waves there will be more and more uh, modifiers so the most dangerous ones are 40 percent monsters will have 40 percent resistances to certain elements so either fire either lightning or chaos and so on so for example this build is focusing on cold resistance for cold damage so having a wave with cold resist is pretty dangerous so you shouldn't always expect that let's say wave 20 is be it's gonna be the same difficulty every single time just sometimes wave 20 for you will be really difficult because you just have 40 percent resist on it and sometimes it will be easier because you just have some uh, easy modifiers the other difficult ones are chance to crit obviously you just the monsters have chance increased chance to crit and crit multi so you will more often get one shot at and the other one is monsters shoot additional projectiles and i do believe with wave 20 they can shoot up to three additional projectiles and it's very dangerous especially for bosses because bosses also have some abilities that shoot projectiles so now let's talk about the bosses so here in poe db you can uh, just type omniphobia which is one of the bosses in search and you can see omniphobia fear manifest and you can see all of the abilities on that of that boss and you can do that for any boss in the game actually and you will most likely not recognize uh, like the names of abilities and which ones are them but it's not important the most important thing is to recognize what type of damage they do and just what kind of abilities they do and what kind of elements they afflict so for example you can see here this attack will affect bleed so immediately you know that when you are fighting omniphobia you should focus on uh, on having some kind of bleed immunity because if you get hit by this attack you will be bleeding and most likely die the next one is this one you can see this one is shooting projectiles so also you know that if a wave has additional projectiles this ability is gonna be more dangerous another one is this line so you can see that this ability has some of the damage converted to chaos so you immediately know that when fighting omniphobia you should have some chaos resistances or you will have some issues all of the other uh, abilities are not that important there is not that much that much information about them so now let's look at the causes so causes has more abilities and you can see here that some of them are dealing lightning damage 
and they will be inflicting shock. Some of them are f uh, fire and they are inflicting ignite, so you should also have some kind of ignite and lightning, uh, I mean shock protection. Mm. Another information is that it also deals some chaos damage and I do believe it also has, yes, it has an ability that, that also shoots projectors. So if you have projectile mode on one wave, it's also gonna be more difficult. So these are the most important information about the bosses. So now I will actually show you the video when I am fighting uh, wave 20 with crit, with attack speed, cast speed and so on, and three additional projector. So this is actually a really dangerous wave, especially for the amount of damage that you take. There is no uh, resistances on monsters and so on, so you will not be dealing uh, less damage, but you will be be less, be more likely to die. So let's look at this wave. So at the start, I am just uh, fighting some normal monsters, and I am dying a few times. I'm just gonna skip that. Uh, here is the boss spawn. So I saw one boss, I saw a second one, so I immediately ran to the top and I started to clear all of the monsters. So I already know this wave is gonna be really hard and I decided that first I'm gonna clear all of the monsters, then I'm gonna focus on killing the boss. And obviously if you have a good enough build you are not struggling with bosses, you will just one-shot them, so you don't really need to know all of the mechanics. But if your build is not good enough, it's really nice to know how to fight these bosses. So I cleared most of the top part, now I am clearing the bottom. And first thing I want to do is I am trying to split them. So again I died one more time, so I only have two portals. And here I am moving to the right, I am hoping that the Cosis will teleport. So one of the abilities that Cosis have is the teleport ability. So you can use it to your advantage and just position yourself somewhere and hope that the boss will teleport to you. So for, unfortunately he didn't teleport here, he just started attacking me and Omniphobia is also attacking me, so I was not able to split them over here, so I am moving to the top and he causes teleported on me, but unfortunately on Omniphobia also is moving to me. So I am moving even more to the top, but Kossi started doing his, I would say, ultimate ability. So he is charging uh, towards this area and the bubble is appearing. And he also gained energy shield. So he is gonna continue channeling it for 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, the bubble is gonna be really big or he is gonna stop doing it if you break through his energy shield. And if you don't break through his energy shield, he will just have it after he is done with channeling. And this will be just dealing a lot of damage to you if you are standing in it, but also boss can jump on it. And when he jumps on it, he will destroy it and he will release a big wave that will pretty much just one-shot you. Most of the builds are not able to survive it and the radius of the wave is bigger depending on how big is the bubble. So it is a good idea to just break his shield as fast as possible. But here I am not able to do that because I am also focusing on uh, fighting with Omniphobia, so I can't really just break the energy shield that easily. So I'm moving to the bottom. I know that the Cosis will just stand over there and channel his abilities, so, so I am hoping to spread the Omniphobia from him to the right. So that's what I am doing. But unfortunately, here as you will see in a second, Cosis broke his ability and he will also start attacking me. So Cosis is already here and I am also gonna die. So I am on my last portal and now you will see how I am actually fighting the bosses. Uh, the, mo the monsters are already dead, so now I am only focusing on fighting the bosses. So one more time, I am trying to split them, and here Cosis jumped on the bubble. 
so I'm just gonna rewind a little bit. I knew that there is a bubble here, so Vicosis will jump soon, so this was a good way to split them. So I went to the top, and now you can see here the animation of Cosis jumping. And I am moving to the top to avoid the wave. But here you can see that I don't see a wave and I am actually going back. And now I see the wave and I now I am running away. Uh, the reason for that is because the way PoE works is that most of the like abilities and monsters and so on, once they are outside of your uh, field of view, so like one screen uh, away, they will actually stop doing anything. It's kind of like they don't exist. So if I actually don't see a wave, uh, there is a chance that the wave is actually just stopped and not doing anything. So if I would, let's say, see the expo uh, the cos is doing his animation, or jumping on top of that, and I would, let's say, run away over here instantly and wait over there for 10 seconds, mm, I would think that the wave is done, and then I would run back and I would get hit by a wave, like 10 seconds after. That's because just the wave stopped when I moved too far away. So I always make sure when I am running away that I actually can see a wave and I know that it actually did uh, stop uh, like moving away. So now here I can see it and I'm moving away and it's gone. So now I will move back. I'm waiting for him to teleport on top of me and he did it right now. So now you will see how I am actually fighting him. So the best way to fight him is stand in a melee range. So this way he will only, well most of the time he will just do his melee attack. So when he is casting this bubble you don't really have to avoid anything, you can just stand here and also you can just stand around it. The bubble is not really that dangerous. It's only gonna be dangerous once it once it's actually exploding. So then I can just run to the bottom. So now I am still just running around, avoiding his melee attacks. So it's pretty easy fight if you are doing it this way. You can actually just fight like that almost forever. But he will still from time to time use his special abilities. So here you can see he's doing his kind of channeling attack when he's throwing weapons and leaving on the ground the like a small bubble so here you can see the small versions of the bubbles and it's also you can just still stand around in his melee range and just continue avoiding his attacks as you can see here i am doing that uh, so from now on i am just running around and i am not taking damage but he is also leaving these things on the ground and once you stand in them for like one second they will explode and then they can easily one shot you. So after some time I decided to run away and basically let him be over there and the, these bubbles will disappear after some time. And also I do believe this ability is affected by the projectiles. I am actually not 100% sure on that, so he might actually spawn more of them if you have additional projectiles. Now I went back to the Omniphobia, and here you can see one of his special abilities. So he's doing like a. He's turning around, and he will shoot a big wave in front of him, and that wave is the ability that I was showing you on PoEDB. So it will deal a lot of damage and it also will apply a bleed. So it's really important to avoid it and if you get hit by it, uh, you should have some kind of bleed immunity. So I'm going here to the bottom and I avoided the wave. And now I'm gonna do the same thing that I was doing for Kossi. So I will just stand in his melee range and just avoid his melee attacks. So this is his second special ability and probably the most deadly one so he will put his weapon kind of down and he will begin to uh, charge his ability with kind of like moving his uh, uh, belly around and he will target you he will not target the ground like the space he will follow you so as you can see here when i go to the top he will start turning towards me and he will target me and shoot like multiple projectiles 
and these project projectors are really deadly and also are affected by the wave modifier so there is a ton of them so the best way to avoid them is just wait for the end of animation and just use some kind of movement ability like here i move the dash to move away from it or you can outrange it but it's not that easy to avoid so it's one of the most deadly abilities next ability that he has is he will target a ground uh, so this time around not you just ground uh, below you and he will do three attacks so one two and now he's doing a big attacks so three and this one will be bigger and the second one uh, next one ability is the same thing but he's just moving a bit uh, forward but most of his abilities are melee and in uh, cone so now i will just start moving in front and just around and again his special ability i did wait a little bit and now i am just moving to the side and using dash to avoid literally at the end next ability is the leap attack so when you are uh, far away from him he can leap on top of you so you can see here but it also just targets the ground below you so you can easily avoid it and now omniphobia will die and i will go back to causes so uh, what I'm doing here is I know that there are a lot of like bubbles and so on at the top So I'm trying to move towards the right hoping that he will teleport to me But unfortunately he's out of range and I believe this also counts as the like a wall So he can't actually teleport to me. So I have to run towards him and as you can see here he actually did uh, His attack towards me and I was I believe pretty lucky here I did probably uh, dodge some of them and also my flask was procced because I took savage hit so I got healed a little bit so it was uh, kind of dangerous I could and I could have easily died over there and now he did teleport on top of the bubble and made it explode but it was a small one so I'm not really in a dangerous position so I am able to go back to fighting him but I don't want to fight around the bubble to the top so I'm trying to force him to move to the bottom so he unfortunately started channeling his uh, big bubble again so I have to attack him I'm trying to break here energy shield and now I will move to the bottom again to make him be in a better position also he is doing his channeling attack again so I am trying to run away but this time around he is also doing the fire channeling attack so he will shoot just a lot of fire projectiles and they will just deal damage so it's a bit worse than the the one that are leaving the bubbles on the ground uh, but it's still really dangerous so now i am tr hoping that he will teleport towards me and he's doing that right now so again i will just start running around and dealing damage to him so that's a good uh, moment to start doing some damage but unfortunately he is again doing the bubble attack so i'm breaking through his bubble and now you mm, as you probably remember there is one big bubble here one big bubble here and there is also one at the top so right now i'm in a really dangerous position he can uh, make all of them explode and be, make very big waves and i am uh, in very dangerous position so what i'm doing here i'm just trying to kill him super fast but unfortunately he is doing the explosion so i'm running to the top and the last thing you need to know is that when the bubble is exploding and there is a wave if that wave hits another bubble that bubble is also gonna explode so this bubble is probably in range of this one so i know that both of them will explode so i'm running to the top now I am waiting, like I said previously, I always wait to see if wave is actually finished. Uh, I am not running too far. And now I can see this one did also explode, so I am running further away to the top. All of these small ones also did explode, but this one was uh, too far away and it didn't explode. If it was like around here, I would probably just die over here they would there would probably no be no way that i could avoid all of them so i'm running back to the boss and just killing him 
and that's it. So again, the most important uh, way, the, the best ways to kill the bosses is just running uh, around them, just in a melee range, avoiding all of uh, their attacks. But if they are doing some uh, special attacks, you should uh, start running away from them and then go back to doing just a normal rotation. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the rewards. So Simulacrum uh, will sometimes drop a special unique item that you can only drop here. So Megalomaniac, Split Personality and Voices, so unique cluster jewels. Each Simulacrum can only drop one of them and it doesn't drop one always. I do believe it's like one in three, maybe four. I never actually did test what is the chance and usually you will get Megalomaniac or Split Personality which can be worth a little bit, but usually not. Split personality uh, is usually worth a little bit if it has a good mods. Uh, usually, I believe intelligence and energy shield are two of the best modifiers that you can get on it. The megalomaniac is uh, kind of tricky and it's really hard to price them. I usually just try to sell them for one exalt, then I reduce price to like 70, then 50, 30, and so on. Uh, Megalomaniac is usually really good if you can hit some mods that just fit well together. And especially if you get some mods that you normally can't get on medium cluster jewel. Uh, so for example, like mm, Disorienting Display or Blanketed Snow. Dorianis lesson is really good to get on uh, Megalomaniac and so on. And the last one is voices. And voices can have seven passives, five passives, three passives, and one passives. And if you get one with three or one passives, you made like a ton of money. I do believe one passive is usually around like two mirrors. Three passives is around like 70 exalts and five passives around five exalts and seven passive is usually not worth that much usually around like 50 chaos so that's the most rare drop and i actually haven't gotten a single uh, three or one passive voices ever so it's like super super rare the build i recommend for uh, simulacrum is my toxic ring character i will uh, link it in the description but i also made a video about it uh, and except for the uniques, you also get just random normal rewards. And the most amount of money you're gonna get is from the fossils, currency, and scarabs. And last thing I want to talk about is how much currency you can make from it. So I would say simulacrums are pretty much always worth doing. Usually, price for one simulacrum is around one exalt. I do believe right now it's around 70C because Delirium is on map device. So you actually can farm them pretty easily this league, so they are not worth that much. But you can still make quite a lot of money from it. And if you are gonna do at least 19 waves and you're gonna get every single time 5 rewards, you should make profit from them. And if you're gonna do 20 waves and 5 to 6 rewards you're gonna make like a big big profit i did some tests and usually i would make like three exalts per hour and more just farming simulacrums and the important part about farming simulacrum is just you should farm a lot of them because you're gonna get a lot of like different small rewards as you can see i just got like one c like few other currencies and so on you will get like uh, single scarabs and so on so it's really annoying to just sell them just one by one so you should do a lot of them and then sell them in bulk this way you will also make a little bit extra for selling stuff in bulk and the last thing is leveling gems so simulacrum is one of the best ways to gain experience so uh, leveling gems is actually really big so if you are playing a character that doesn't require a lot of gems in your uh, character like my toxic rain character when i am leveling 25 gems you can make a lot of money 
I do believe the only two places where you can get more experience uh, than Simulacrum is Five Way uh, Legion uh, Emblem uh, Encounter and the Chayula Bridge Sons, pure Chayula Bridge Sons. So Simulacrums are really, really good for gaining experience, so you can also make a lot of money through leveling things like Empower, Enlighten, Awaken, and Gems, and so on. So that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.